What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I got something a little bit different for you. We're going to be creating our own custom IO backplate because I have a motherboard that I don't have one for and I've never done this before. So let's get into it. So as much you guys, I just want to quickly premise the video of what we're taking on. Uh, as you can see, I have a motherboard in this case and um, I don't have the backplate or the IO shield. So I want to try to create a good clean look, especially considering that this case is the Corsair Crystal 570. Um, so look real nice and I, I kind of feel like if I leave it like this, it's going to be a bit of an eyesore. So we got me a couple blanks here and we're going to be going on a little bit of a journey to see if we can create something that'll cover up the extra space here by not having an IO uh, shield and uh, see if it'll complete the look of this build I am working on putting together now. All right, so real quick, let's go over the materials we need to hopefully do this right. So previously we had the uh, blanks. I took the protective film off. It's got two, two attempts here. Uh, I got pen just to make some marks on paper I have sitting here. Uh, sharp blade with extra blades, caliper for making precise measurements if we need to go to that length. Um, so this piece of kind of cardstock paper, my plan with that is just grabbing one of the blanks, tracing it so I know exactly the full size it needs to be, then matching that up here to the back of the case so that I can feel out the areas I need to kind of draw out on the paper to make a cutout initially with a template with paper. And then I'm gonna put that on here on this plexi piece just to protect my, um, my surface here from cutting into the wood. And then carve out my template. And then lastly, the Dremel with plenty of bits to cut that out on a blank so we shall see if this works what's up guys editing Dan here real quick I just wanted to do a quick little voiceover um, as you can see right here I'm working on getting my piece of cardboard cut out that uh, is up at the size of the uh, IO shield blank so that way I can kind of put it up there against the case behind the motherboard and start making a very rough, and I'm going to say very rough, um, beginning template uh, for making this IO shield. So as I mentioned, you know, my idea was well, I'm going to go ahead and just cut something out that's two size that I can put up against behind the motherboard and kind of feel around where there's gaps between you know ports ethernet jacks whatever and know that that's my space that I need to make a cut for right so as you see I'm cutting out another piece because I'm cutting I'm beginning to struggle here on what exactly is going on and um, finding out that this isn't working out so good and I kind of have, I have to approach this a bit differently. So um, I move on and I begin by thinking, all right, let's go ahead and let's put some blue tape, painter's tape on the back of the blank. And this is what I'll draw my template on. So now what you can see, I grab some calipers and start making these measurements with the calipers, measuring out the gap between where you know parts of the motherboard end where a USB jack might be or something of that nature and how much space I have from there to the edge of the case and put that together and know that okay this is the gap this is the area where I need to draw and measure up and uh, and create my cut for so here you see me I'm just going back and forth back and forth and just slowly building that template you know making sure that my measurements are right double checking triple checking quadruple checking making sure it's all good and 
as you can see right there, I just held it up to the side to kind of give a rough feel like, okay, that looks like it's about right. So I'm going to finish up drawing out this template and uh, basically then I'll have what I need to uh, go forward and make the cuts. So I'm going to flip back to live Dan, who's actually doing the process and he'll go over kind of what I just talked about real quick. Okay, so originally I thought, okay, let's put a, uh, a uh, template up and kind of feel out where I need to make the cutouts here. That kind of didn't really work out too well for me because this right here, uh, this jack is kind of sticking out so much where I can't get a good feel and I can't really put this up here to kind of feel out where I need to make my cuts. So I just had the heck with that and um, just very precisely and multiple times over measured the, uh, the gaps here um, with the calipers and then got basically got myself a, a template ready for the Dremel. So the next part here is gonna be cutting this out with the Dremel and hopefully that goes well. So here we go. Well, for the most part it worked out, minus uh, accidentally slipped and cut straight through the ends of the blank. Um, overall though, uh, I think the process went pretty well and this actually might be still usable um, because just get it pushed in there and then the motherboard can hold it in. So. I'm going to try and use this the way it is. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, look at that. That is not half bad at all. Um, I pretty much got everything dead on. I mean, I do have a bit of a gap here at the top that I should have maybe just kind of... The, the mistake I made here was trimming too close to the edge where I accidentally cut the thing in, in two pieces and here's where I can trim this just a hair hair back but the process with using the calipers and then marking it off <clears throat> with a tape down blank uh, I'd say this this worked perfectly so um, I left the blue tape on to kind of give you an idea of <clears throat> what I left and where where things were cut out so I am enjoying this. This is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep stick with this because it doesn't move. You know, once the the motherboard is basically holding it in. The only time this would be an issue is you take the motherboard out. So I mean, but you can just set it back in like you normally would with any old I/O shield. So motherboard hold, motherboard holds it in. We got pretty good light protection for dust coming in through the big gaps because obviously the where the blue area is that's open space so that would have been a big gaping hole so this makes it definitely look a little more professional so i like it all right so i took a whole piece of 80 grit sandpaper i had sitting around at the house um just deburred the edges um that way I can handle it well. And I have some Plasti Dip that I have sitting at the house. So, because this is kind of taking a beating and looks a little ugly, I'm gonna clean it up. And then I'm going to throw some Plasti Dip on it. And I think that should complete it. Thank you. 
Alright guys, check it out. Not bad. I think the Plasti Dip was a perfect touch. I got a little tiny nick right there, but no big deal. Um, but if, if you notice, it's all sitting in there by itself now with no motherboard pinching it in. So with the Plasti Dip, it actually added a bit of material that helps. that's helping it grab the case. So, and I did it on both sides. So, um, now I can mount the motherboard in and uh, not have to do it upside down or crazy way because my IO shield's in two pieces. So this is working out really well. So I'm gonna put the motherboard in and give it the final look. So stand by. Okay, here we have it, final product. A custom metal IO uh, backplate or IO shield. Yeah, it's not absolutely perfect, but it looks pretty darn OEM. And I think the Plasti Dip was a really good touch. So that about does it, guys. Um, this is the first time me actually doing this, so I got a bit to learn. Um, one thing definitely I learned is when cutting around the edges, give yourself a solid you know, one millimeter gap, you know, although these are really tight and that's why I got all the way to the edge. But where you find, get yourself into trouble is up here in the corners where uh, you could actually cut the thing into two pieces accidentally. So um, I didn't expect it to be absolutely perfect uh, because I mean, I, I don't know how it actually produce a perfect piece, but all in all, I think this will make the build look a lot more clean without having, as you can see, where all the space would be open and help protect uh, some dust buildup. So that is my uh, how-to of how to build an IO shield. Um, I may be doing this more in the future if I get uh, other opportunities like this where I get a motherboard and no backplate, so, or IO shield. I keep calling it backplate. But anyway... That is it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video.